session. Uh, the talk is by Esge Erikan. She is postdoctoral researcher at Justus Liebig University, Geisen. She works in the lab of Katia Fieler. And it, I give the stage to you, Esge. Please carry on. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, so first, I'm going to share my screen. OK, I hope everybody can see my screen right now. Yeah, good. OK, so hello, everyone. Uh, today, I'm going to talk about an fMRI study on tactile suppression. Um, and more specifically, the study investigates how reach relevant somatosensory signals modulate neural activity uh, associated with suppression. Before that, I would like to give you a very brief intro on what tactile suppression is and how it can be measured. Um, so tactile suppression is the phenomenon that uh, we, uh, our sensitivity to tactile signals on a moving limb is reduced. Uh, it can be observed, for example, for self-produced uh, tactile sensation. So here in this example, uh, the participants are asked to uh, produce a presented target force. And when they pro produce this force themselves, uh, they match it with a higher force than when they pr produce it through a slider. Tactile suppression can also be observed during reaching movements and with external applied tactile stimulation. So here in the study, um, the participants are presented with a brief vibrotactile stimuli on their index finger in various phases of the reaching movement. And what the researchers observed was that the uh, detection for these tactile stimuli was way lower uh, right before and uh, during the course of the movement. Okay, so um, it it's uh, thought that uh, suppression uh, occurs as a result of an internal uh, model that predicts the sensory feedback of the movement and attenuates these signals that match the predictions. And uh, this is thought to uh, compensate for our limited capacity to process uh, more relevant or novel sen uh, sensory information. And such a processing also requires an efficient weighting and integration of available predictive and feedback signals. Um, so when we look at the neural implementation, it's also in line with uh, what we see in behavior. Uh, so tactile suppression has been found to be associated with reduced activation in uh, somatosensory areas, such as the primary and secondary somatosensory cortices, S1, S2, as well as the insula. Activation changes have also been found in the premotor cortex and more specifically the supplementary motor area um, that is uh, implicated in the uh, planning of um, intentional movements and generation of motor commands. Also, uh, deactivations have been found in the uh, posterior parietal cortex, including the inferior parietal lobule, the supramarginal gyrus, as well as the cerebellum. And these are areas that are strongly linked with the prediction and monitoring of movement-related uh, somatosensory signals. So we have a clear uh, picture of what tactile suppression is and its uh, neural implementation. But more uh, recent studies have demonstrated that it's um, not an all or none phenomenon. So we have um, the strength of suppression can actually be modulated depending on the relevance of the uh, somat sensory feedback signals. So for example, uh, suppression is greater when we reach to our own hand than uh, we reach to an external target. And this is possibly to upregulate the uh, reach related processing on the target hand. Likewise, we also uh, see greater suppression when feedback signals are uh, less important. So when we are about to grasp something, suppression on our index finger that uh, would grasp the object is actually less than on our forearm. So there are definitely these modulations. Um, so there is a um, variety of behavioral evidence, but the neural implementation of this modulation is not clear. And 
In this study, this is what we investigated. So we specifically asked the question of whether bold activation associated with suppression is modulated by the relevance of the somatosensory feedback signals. And for that, we used reaching movements uh, to uh, one's own hand or to an external target. Um, and we expect modulations in regions associated with the processing, integration, and prediction of tactile stimuli uh, during suppression. So we would expect uh, modulations, um, changes in modulation across these two uh, different movements. So here is what we did in the experimental paradigm. Um, the participants are asked to reach either to their own left index finger, so that would be the somatosensory reach goal, or uh, to a touch screen. This is the external reach goal. They were also um, um, they also received a brief uh, tactile vibration on the to be moved index finger. Uh, that was to probe uh, suppression. So we have uh, probe trials. We also have uh, trials without any stimulation. And um, importantly, we presented the probes right before uh, reaching movement. So this would be the planning phase and when suppression can be measured without the interference of the movement itself. At the end of the reach, we asked them whether they detected anything, and they answered either yes or no. Um, so this is how uh, movement trials look like. We also presented baseline trials in which they received uh, same stimuli, but uh, this time without moving their hands. So in this case, we should, shouldn't be seeing any suppression. Okay, so here are the behavioral results. Um, so here on this graph, you see a proportion of detection responses as a function of stimulus intensity. We uh, presented um, stimuli of different intensities. And uh, we also um, fitted psychometric functions to uh, the proportion of detection responses for each condition in order to get a detection threshold estimate. And here you can see that, so this is one participant, that the uh, detection thresholds for the baseline condition is uh, much lower than thresholds for the uh, reaching conditions. And this actually um, confirms uh, this suppression effect. We also looked um, for differences between the uh, different reaching movements in terms of suppression by uh, obtaining a threshold difference. So this uh, we did by um, subtracting each threshold, uh, movement threshold from the baseline condition. And we compared these two. And uh, we saw that uh, there was stronger suppression when uh, participants reached to their own uh, index finger, which is in line with our expectation. Okay, so here are the behavioral results. Um, in order to assess bold activation associated with suppression, we focused on the interaction between um, movement, so these different movements, and uh, whether there was a probe uh, presented or not. Uh, so in this uh, in this condition, you see uh, we contrast as external with some out sensory reaching movements and also for uh, probe present and absent trials. And this uh, these were the, are the results. So we see that the uh, activation in the uh, SMA, the uh, supramarginal gyrus. Uh, insula is um, modulated by whether the movement is somatosensory, um, whether the uh, goal target is somatosensory or external, and also whether a probe was presented or not. So this you can see more clearly uh, by um, just looking at the activations in, um, so here are two examples, uh, two regions of interest. So this is the postcentral gyrus S1 and the SMA. And you see that uh, it's modulated by whether a probe was presented. And in the somatosensory condition, we see um, lower activation in these areas. 
We also um, used PPIs to assess changes in coupling between uh, different areas that are associated with uh, the processing and integration of somatosensory signals. Uh, for this, we chose the supramarginal gyrus. Uh, supramarginal gyrus has been shown as an area that is implicated in the um, integration of uh, somatosensory uh, signals. And we assessed a uh, functional coupling between this area as, and the uh, S2, as well as the insula. So these are somatosensory processing areas. And uh, we found that uh, the this um, functional coupling was stronger when the reaching movement was somatosensory. And again, when there was a probe was uh, probe presented. Okay, uh, so to sum up, we, um, in our study, we confirmed that uh, tactile separation is modulated by the relevance of the somatosensory feedback. We also um, had um, bold activation that is in line with what we see in behavior. So we uh, observed that probes during somatosensory reaching is associated with deactivations in areas that are involved in somatosensory processing, such as the S1, the insula, uh, as well as somatosensory integration and prediction, um, such as the supramarginal gyrus, and also uh, planning, movement planning and uh, motor command generation. And, and this would be the SMA. And uh, increased coupling between the supramarginal gyrus and um, S2, as well as the insula, uh, suggests that um, the modulations in integration of somatosensory signals are seen for um, different types of uh, movements. And to sum up, um, in uh, overall, our results provide the first neural evidence that uh, suppression is not an all or none. Uh, mechanism and can arise from uh, flexible modulation of uh, predictive and feedback signals during reaching. And that would be the end of my talk. I would like to thank my co-authors and also um, student assistants that helped with data collection and thank you all for listening and I'm happy to receive questions. Thank you so much, Iskai. Uh, do we have any questions? The, yes, we do have one question okay. from JJ Audubon. Uh, the question is, is there any way to look at processing integration movement separately? Because those are very different processes. Um, can I have the question uh, again? Or uh, maybe yeah, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I can I also see. check. OK, is there yeah, any way yeah, to? Yeah. Yeah and movement separately. You got okay. it in the chat? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Now I can see that. Yes. Um, yeah, um, I agree <laughs> totally with that. It's really difficult. So at least in this case, um, we try to um, account for movement-related effects by having the pro-present and absent trials. So here we focused on probe present trials and uh, in probe absent trials, um, the idea is to at least account for movement related effects. But yeah, I, I agree um, that is quite uh, difficult. Okay, mm -hmm. thank you so much. And thank you Arban for the question. Do we have any other question? Any discussion, any query with others? Okay, so it was really a very interesting talk, listening to tactile suppression. It was really very interesting. Thank you so much, Eskai. Thank you, and, thank uh, you. Uh, we now move to the uh, next.